My room looks a bit different than the last time you saw it. In Life is Strange, you play as a self-aware and shy 19-year-old Max, who has returned to a hometown of Arcadia Bay to attend a prestigious art school. And so far, things aren't going well for her. She's isolated by the school's social cliques and is failing to impress a photography teacher and hero, Mr. Jefferson. But, as you might have guessed, her life gets a whole lot stranger when she has visions of a terrifying storm and discovers she can rewind time. This newfound power of Max's is somewhat of a first for adventure games, as it empowers players with the chance to make better informed decisions. When a decision has to be made, you can simply rewind and try both options, so as to see the direct consequences, and then make your final decision. You just won't know what happens in the long run, and because you can't rewind once in a new area, you still own your decisions. Why Arvis? Can you give me I an actually did it. Photographer who perfectly captured the, the story is classic teen drama and has bits of The O.C., Pretty Little Liars, Veronica Mars and Riley Rewind. It's also incredibly cliché, with every character fitting to a well-worn archetype. There's the timid religious girl, stuck-up bitch, jocks, and the list goes on. This will definitely turn some people off, but to be fair, also makes delving beyond the stereotypes and uncovering everyone's secrets all the more tantalising. Also, Chloe, who the creators have gone to painstakingly over-the-top attempts to portray as a rebellious punk teen, is still believable as a person. Upon reuniting with her, Chloe immediately fits into the role of Max's old best friend and you really do trust everything she says. There's real distinction between her and the other characters that don't really know Max. And it's at points like this that the game's story is at its best and most real. After five years, you're still Max Caulfield. Don't give me the guilty face. At least pretend you're glad to see me. I am seriously glad. The writing is a bit of a weakness that undermines the story. At times, it has a potent cringe factor, which is particularly evidenced by the constant attempts to just throw the word Halla into Chloe's dialogue. You are going to get in hella more trouble for this than drugs. You hella saved my life. But then on other occasions, the misplaced writing is just funny. Oh look, it's Max Caulfield, the selfie hoe of Blackwell. Now. Why don't you go fuck your selfie? We also had a few technical gripes. This included some low quality body models that struggled with curvier characters. And more hilariously, Mr. Jefferson being unable to sync his lips with his speech. Since you've captured our interest and clearly want to join the conversation, can you please tell us the name of the process that gave birth to the first self portraits? However, some smart camera angles and overall natural and convincing voice acting overcome this specific issue. Hey! Leave Joyce out of this! I wish you'd leave Joyce! Like now! Life is Strange has some noticeable flaws, but also does a lot right. It seems at times the developers are trying too hard to get their message across, and this accumulates in archetypal characters and exaggerated writing. But despite this, it is obvious that Life is Strange has heart behind it and in its story. Not to mention, its unique rewind mechanic and decision system has successfully brought genuine freshness into the adventure genre. Episode 1 is an introduction to the story and we need to see how exactly decisions and characters will play out. But for an intro, it was hella fun. Sorry, I couldn't resist. And we'll be coming back to Arcadia Bay for episode 2 in March. If Life is Strange floats your boats, we can review the future episodes too. Just tell us so we know. I thank you for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.